Okay, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, then you'll know that I create monthly top apps videos that feature a collection of new apps that I think are either noteworthy or worth trying out or perhaps even both. So I've tried out a lot of apps in my time, but in all of my testing, one thing I've always had at the back of my mind is that a lot of my favorite apps are actually ones that are or have been in alpha, beta, or early access testing of some sort. Now, when an app is in the alpha, beta, or early access phase, it essentially means that the developers are wanting users from the public to test the app to try and iron out any bugs before it is deemed ready for prime time. Often the case though, is that these early versions of the apps include some really cool features that most people otherwise wouldn't have known about. So with that in mind, I've sifted through countless web articles and applications dedicated to beta apps themselves, as well as my own videos to put together a list of 10 amazing apps that are currently in beta or early access testing. So let's do it. Launchair version two has been a surprisingly popular app given that you can't actually download it via the Google Play Store. If you haven't heard of it, Launchair version two is a home screen launcher replacement app and it's not to be confused with version one, which is actually available on the Play Store. Version two is a much more advanced launcher compared to version one, in my opinion, with a lot of extra customization control. The app also went through a bit of a development hell over the past year or so, but it's recently been resurrected and it looks like it could be moving towards becoming very active and well supported once more going forward. Keep in mind, it is technically in the alpha testing phase, not even beta at this stage, which means there might be lots of bugs depending on the device that you're using it on. And it is only available through a Telegram channel, which I will have linked down below. All right, from there is Memorigi version five. I've talked about Memorigi a number of times on my channel now. It is an excellent tasks and reminder application, and it's recently been going through a bit of a design overhaul to make it an even better app than it already was. So firstly, to access version five, you will need to join the beta program through the Google Play Store listing. But once joined, you'll see an updated yet somewhat familiar design, but it definitely has a much fresher look and feel to it overall. And there are also a bunch of new features hidden just beneath the surface as well. You can read the full list of new features on the Play Store listing once you've updated to the beta version. But what's cool is that I've actually been using this version for the past few weeks and I've been in direct communication with the developer and I've been providing him with feedback and suggestions to hopefully make the app even cooler. It's a really great app and it's actually also nearly out of beta testing. So jump in now to have an opportunity to provide real feedback that could influence the direction the app takes. Now, Weather by Falcon is an app I featured a little while ago on my channel and it still isn't out of beta, but it's a really great weather app that has a clean, lightweight and informative approach to showing you the weather. The app doesn't have too many hidden tricks up its sleeve and pretty much all of the information you can access is available on this one page. But as you can see, it's got a really nice design that makes viewing a dense amount of information related to the weather a visually pleasing experience. It actually hasn't been updated since late 2019, so my guess is that it might never leave beta at all. And another app that hasn't been updated for a while, so might potentially also be stuck in beta forever, is one called Curator. This is a gallery application that uses offline artificial intelligence to help organize your photos. You can, of course, just use the app as a standard photo gallery, but in reality, the fun parts of the app come into play when you utilize the search and tags functionality. You input a keyword, the app will show you what it thinks is a matching photo. And this makes it really easy to sift through endless amounts of photos really quickly. I would have loved to have seen this app leave the early access testing phase, but it's really cool and definitely worth checking out. Many of you have probably already heard of the Substratum theming engine, but did you know that they actually also have a light version available that is both free and in early access? The main advantage to the light version of Substratum is in the name. It's actually a smaller app package itself and it's designed to be faster and more stable than its non-light brother. Obviously, Substratum only works on rooted devices or older versions of Android, so keep that in mind. But if you've been interested in trying out the Substratum theming engine in the past, but were put off because of that price tag, well, the light version is a seriously good bet. I featured 2Bird a long time ago on my channel. Back then it was in early access. Now it's moved to beta, but this is an impressive all-in-one email client application. So the UI is super clean and uncluttered, which is great. And if you want, you can set the app up so that it simply acts as an effective email client. 
But to really maximize the app's potential, you'll wanna check out the additional features. So you can also use the app to take notes, you can use it to set reminders, and you can also use it to create to-do lists. And all of these actions happen directly within your inbox, and that's where they'll continue to live. I actually haven't used this app since I first featured it. I'll be honest, I kind of forgotten about it, but since featuring it in this video, I'm kind of keen to start using it again. Now Flux is another weather app that I think actually has very limited spots in its beta program, but it is a really powerful all-in-one weather tool that comes with a neat UI as well. All of the information you could ever want or need in a weather app is here, and you even get a free built-in weather radar, which is fantastic. In reality though, it's the way that the app looks and feels that makes it so great for me. So if you can get a spot in the beta program, it's definitely worth checking out. Nova Launcher is by far and away the most popular third-party launcher of all time, but like a few apps, on this list, it kind of went into development no man's land for a while and wasn't receiving many updates. That is until Nova 7 came along. So this version is well and truly in beta at the moment. And at the time of recording this video, it can only be downloaded officially via a Discord server linked below. But the reason this version is so significant is because it is essentially a complete rewrite of the application from the ground up. This rebuild has helped to fix a slew of issues that were related to the old version, and it also brings along a bunch of new features to make it more in line with modern home screen launches. More than anything, the Nova 7 update just feels a heck of a lot smoother compared to previous versions of Nova Launcher. And if you're yet to try it out, well, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Firefox Screenshot Go is an app that has featured a couple of times on my channel now, but its functionality makes it very clear as to why that is the case. So if you're someone who, like me, has a bunch of screenshots stored on your phone, well, Firefox Screenshot Go will sift through every single one that's stored on your phone and will perform a text recognition process. Once complete, you can then type keywords into the search bar, and if those words are in one or several of your screenshots, well, they'll then show up. It's a seriously impressive feature, and it's definitely worth a shot. So finally today, we have Google Chrome Beta. Now, there's a good chance that a lot of you either currently use Google Chrome as your main browser, or you've at least used it at one point in the past. But did you know that there are actually different versions available on the Play Store, all in different phases of the development cycle? So a quick look on the Play Store will show you that in addition to the regular Google Chrome app, we also have Chrome Beta, Chrome Dev, and Chrome Canary, each with progressively newer and less stable features to check out. Feel free to pick your flavor, but I think the best middle ground is the Chrome beta option, as most features are bug free, but you still get a good selection of features that won't be in the stable version for months, and in some cases, they never make the transition. If you're a fan of using Google Chrome, but you're looking for something a little more, then definitely give any of these versions of Chrome a go, and you might just find yourself having a little fun experimenting. And so, there it is. As always, if you have any other recommendations for apps still in the testing phase, let us all know down in the comments and perhaps I'll compile another list of 10 for another video in the future. If you enjoyed this video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and Twitter for behind the scenes content and access to promo codes for paid apps that are released each month. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.